So polycystic kidney disease is uh, one of the most commonly inherited major kidney diseases that we manage in the kidney clinic. Um, now, per its name, autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. This means that if an affected parent has got the problem, um, the children, the offspring of that parent, has about a 50% chance of developing the disease as well. Now, about 85% of the time, it's because of a mutation in a gene called polycystin 1, okay? About 15% of the time, it's the type 2 a mutation in polycystin type 2. Now, the polycystin type 1 mutation to cause ADPKD type 1 typically is the more serious condition in that it presents uh, at a much earlier age. And so people can uh, fall into kidney failure in their 30s and 40s and 50s and require dialysis therapy or get a kidney transplant by that age. The type 2s tend to develop kidney failure in their 60s and 70s. They're less common. Sometimes they'll need to be on dialysis for a shorter period of time towards the end of their life or even qualify for a kidney transplant. Now, as we talk about these genetic mutations, we don't typically test for them commonly in clinical practice at this time. Um, doing so is technically challenging and expensive, and, and so we don't tend to do it. It's more of a clinical diagnosis. When you suspect that you may have polycystic kidney disease, speak to your doctor. Um, or one of your healthcare providers. Uh, and we just need to do some very basic imaging. Just a simple ultrasound scan will be able to pick up the disease, uh, polycystic kidney disease. Now, if the growth of the cysts is significant, or if, and if there's some decrease in kidney function, we now have a brand new therapy that we can give to people. Now, it's an expensive therapy, and it does come uh, with potential downside. It's a medication called tolvaptan. Um, Without going into the details of exactly how tolvaptan works, it can help to reduce the cyst growth and delay progression to end-stage kidney disease. So it's great that we have this new therapy now that we can potentially provide to people who've got a strong family history of polycystic kidney disease and who qualify, qualify for that medication. Hi theoretically, drinking a large volume of water may suppress the uh, release of a hormone called ADH from our hypothalamus, from our brain. Hypothetically, this may also reduce the progression of cyst formation too. There's never going to be a clinical trial to see how true this is. But more important, we don't even know how true it would be, uh, that it, how effective it would be. We don't know the volume of water that you would have to drink to really make a clinical significant change. We simply ask people to try and consume as much water as they feasibly can. It would be challenging to get to those volumes we feel. In addition to that, uh, other blood, simple blood pressure medications like lisinopril, ramipril, we'll often have on board as well. Um, but apart from that, there's not a lot of other therapies which are currently available for people with polycystic kidney disease. Now these, these kidneys can become enormous. They can have certain complications. Cysts can become infected. Um, they can sometimes rupture, which can cause a lot of pain, a predisposition towards getting kidney stones. There's some notion as well that it also increases the risk of berry aneurysms in the brain and certainly if there's a family history of aneurysms in the brain or uh, bleeding in the brain then we uh, do do some evaluation to see if there could be some evidence of small aneurysms in certain blood vessels in the brain as well.